Welcome to a new season of the Science Olympiad structural event. This year we'll be building boomilevers and while the official rules aren't out yet, this video will focus on an introduction to the event while showing some examples from the previous cycle to give you a better idea of what might be coming. I will also give a quick introduction as to why this device has some unique build challenges compared to bridges and towers. If you are brand new to all the balsa build events, I recommend you watch some of my other more general videos on things like gluing technique and material selection. I will put links to all the relevant starter videos in the description of this video. So what exactly is a boomilever? If we ask Google, our AI overlord says that a boomilever is a type of structure that extends horizontally from a base and is designed to support a load. It's essentially a cantilevered beam or truss often used in competitions like Science Olympiad. That's pretty cool, and it's an accurate summary of the device we'll be building this season. I'll go into a little more detail in this video, but definitely don't hesitate to use Google to seek out all sorts of information on this event, as there is a ton of great information online these days. Most people have seen examples of real bridges and towers, but you might not be as familiar with what a real-life boomy or load-bearing cantilevered beam might be. One of the best examples is what is known as a tower crane, which can be seen here. These things are often used in building construction where large loads need to be lifted to high heights. These cranes are a bit more complex than what we will be building, but many of the basic loading considerations are the same. Here is something closer to what we will be building this year. The narrow one was from the 2018-2019 season, and the one with the wider base was from the following season. While I don't expect the rules this year to be identical to either of these, we can learn a lot from looking at the basic concepts from these builds. For now, I'll focus on the simpler, narrow design. Here is a picture of the simple boomy set up on the testing rig as it would be ready for a competition. I will go over all the details when the official rules come out, but in general you can see the boomy is attached to the testing wall by a single J-hook. The familiar 5x5 five five centimeter loading block is at the end of the device with the chain and bucket hanging as normal. You may notice I have green tape on the testing stand. That is because the boomy rules usually specify that the center line of the chain must be within 40 to 45 centimeters from the testing wall. I would expect that to be the case this year, but if it's not, I'll discuss that in the upcoming rules videos. The green tape marking is a nice way to quickly see if a particular device is following the rules, but if things are close, you might need to actually measure your device like shown here. Here you can see that this boomy follows the 2018 rules and the center line of the chain is just under 41 centimeters from the testing wall. You'll want to keep that dimension as short as possible as we'll soon see. Here is a side view of just the boomy without the loading block to make things as clear as possible. When a vertical load is applied at the end of the device, the long skinny pieces that attach to the J-hook are under tension, and the bigger horizontal piece is under compression. Tension means that the piece is trying to be pulled apart, and compression means that the loads on the part are pushing them together. If you have built bridges or towers before, you have definitely dealt with both tension and compression loading, but this device takes that to a whole new level. Let's take a closer look at the joints involved with the tension piece. These two joints are really important and are one of the reasons that make building boomies challenging. The sharp-eyed among you have probably already noticed that I'm using basswood here, not balsa. And even still, the sticks are fairly substantial, definitely bigger than the basswood tension members in our bridge builds. I have been hinting at it for a while now, but I'll get right to it. What makes boomies challenging is that the shape of this structure acts like a load multiplier, and the forces involved are much higher than anything we've seen in bridges or towers. You might be wondering how that can be, as we still only have a maximum vertical load of 15 kilograms. I decided not to go into the detailed derivation of the loading equations using static analysis and free body diagrams, but I encourage you to research that online if you want the details. If we assume the height of the boomy is h, and the length is L. The compression force is L divided by H times the vertical downward force. The tension force is the square root of H squared plus L squared divided by H times the vertical downward force. Okay, but what does that mean for a typical example? For this particular division C build, H is 15 centimeters and L is 41 centimeters. If we want the boomy to be able to hold the entire 15 kilograms, 
if we plug the numbers into the equations, the compression force is 41 kilograms and the tension force is a whopping 43.7 kilograms, or just over 96 pounds of force that our tension members need to withstand. Now you can see why these devices are much more robust looking than either bridges or towers and might need to use materials besides balsa wood. What is this crazy contraption? Well, I wanted to see if I could experimentally show these high loads and not just provide theoretical equations and say, trust me. I 3D printed a compression member which I was able to rig up nylon thread to a dynamic load cell to act as the tension member. The idea is to load 15 kilograms just like a normal test and watch the tension load to see how it compares to the theory. I don't expect it to be exact as this rig is certainly not an ideal boomy shape, but hopefully we'll at least be able to see some of the high loading that the theory predicts. Here you can kind of see that the dimensions to the bottom of the compression piece is 15 centimeters and the horizontal length to the chain is 41 centimeters. For these dimensions, you might have to trust me a bit. The first step is to get exactly 15 kilograms of load. This scale is extremely accurate, so I have high confidence that the sand plus bucket is exactly what is shown here. I had less confidence in the accuracy of my load cell, so I wanted to do a quick calibration test. Here you can see me lifting the bucket and the reading, while not perfectly 15 kilograms, is very close and definitely good enough for this demonstration. Here is the moment of truth. The load cell was zeroed before hanging just the bucket, so once all the sand is loaded, it should add exactly 15 kilograms of load to the system. With a height of 15 centimeters and a length of 41 centimeters, our predicted tension load is 43.7 kilograms. Let's see what happens. It looks like we got to a maximum load of about 38.7 kilograms, which is about 11% shy of our theoretical load. But honestly, with this crazy setup, I think that's a pretty good result. It's certainly enough to show that the loads are very high and the theory is believable. For what it's worth, I also tried to make a setup to show the compression load, but my load cell is so heavy it was very difficult to make that work. Something like a load compression pad directly attached to the wall would be ideal, but I think even with this single tension test, you get the idea. For the next steps, I plan on exploring what is necessary to handle these tension loads. Regardless of the rest of the rules, there are a couple questions that will need to be answered. Specifically, what tension pieces are strong enough and how to handle the joints at the hook and at the compression piece. Thanks for watching and please feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions or ideas for future videos you'd like to see.